Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The application of India seeking a membership to the Nuclear Suppliers Group, the NSG, has neither been approved nor rejected at Seoul last week. This was after China, a key member in the 48 nation grouping, raised objections and ensured that the application remained unattended. Meanwhile, the application of India to be part of the Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR, a 35 nation informal grouping, voluntarily agreeing to prevent proliferation of missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles of certain capacities in above, has been accepted and admitted today. However, the inability of India to get into the NSG at Seoul after intense efforts by the Prime Minister and other officials, which was anticipated in some circles, is however being seen as an avoiding, avoidable diplomatic failure in some quarters. On the other hand, the membership of MTCR is being shown as a compensation. We will discuss all this today with Meera Shankar, former ambassador, Bharat Karnad, research professor, National Security Studies at the Center for Policy Research, Ajay Lele, a research fellow at the Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis, and on phone line from Kakinada is Commodore retired Uday Baskar, Director of Society for Policy Studies. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Meera Shankar, how important or how big <coughs> or how serious is this what happened in Seoul? Well, it's a setback in the sense that uh, we pitched the, you know, whole diplomacy around the application very high. Uh, otherwise, of course, it's an ongoing process. And substantively, I think there's no major interest of India which gets affected because the NSG waiver of 2008 already allows civil nuclear commerce with India, despite our not having signed the non-proliferation treaty. So substantively, there's no interest which gets affected. Symbolically, yes. I think more because we pitched our diplomacy so high, which perhaps was not required. Well, well if you're saying that the 2008 waiver itself was, has allowed us to do you know, nuclear commerce and other things, where was the need for this application? Well, this is part of the whole process of integrating India into the nuclear order. And it's something which the Americans had said they would support when President Obama had come here in 2010. So support was expressed for India's membership of the NSG, MTCR, uh, Australia Group and Vasanar Arrangement, mainly because India has harmonized its export controls with the guidelines and um, uh, rules and regulations of these informal groupings. It was, it, was, it was because of that that we got the 2008, uh, uh, in 2008 we got this clearance? Well, it's not just because of that. I think it's because of India's impeccable record right since independence because we have been, even though we are not a signatory to the non-proliferation treaty, we have perhaps been more scrupulous about observing the provisions relating to non-proliferation of nuclear weapons uh, horizontally. And uh, that is something which uh, was recognized at the NSG when they gave us the waiver. They also recognized that a country like India has, you know, huge needs for energy. And if we are to shift really to a path which is less fossil fuel intensive, then nuclear energy becomes an important element. Though now, of course, renewables have, have overtaken, become. you know, uh, are, are overtaking the nuclear energy portfolio because prices are coming down. But given the kind of requirements that we have, then we can't really afford not to look at any source of clean energy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Karnat. How do you look at this? We, we discussed this a, a couple of weeks, weeks back. Well, as I had said then, I think, if I recall, uh, I was skeptical of the success of uh, the Prime Minister's efforts. And here you realize the cost of personalizing diplomacy uh, so much that it becomes a liability even to the country. It certainly was seen as counterproductive in Seoul and lead up to Seoul. Um, so the lesson to take home is really that um, unless success is certain 
and this is ensured by um, whoever you are canvassing, whatever countries you're canvassing, at the level of MEA officials doing the canvassing rather than the Prime Minister himself. Um, Staking his uh, everything. Yeah, because you know he has invested his personal capital. And that's a very prized thing. You do not just dispense and uh, dispense with such capital in such easy a way unless the returns are assured. And I don't think that was assured at all in the lead up to Seoul. In fact, the Chinese had made very clear what their position was. And if it was not the cover of the various six other states that also had some reservations or the other, uh, the Chinese, even if all the other states had stood down and been part of the consensus, the Chinese would still have ensured that this attempt would fail. So, uh, with, despite all this evidence of China's um, resistance uh, on what they say is principle, plainly it is large, you know, larger geostrategics that are involved, uh, for India to go ahead in the manner we did and in the manner that the Prime Minister pushed it and made a big media hoo-ha about it, um, one can't but then conclude that this was in some sense uh, a failure of the Prime Minister and his attempts at canvassing but his do you know, counterparts. Do you, do, you, do you agree with uh, Mira Shankar that even without, without this membership of the NSG, we, have a, we, we are getting what we want? No, but look, this is what we said last time when we talked. Uh, the NSG waiver was, had given us license, gives us license for full commerce and trade. And we have used it. So this entry into the NSG in a formal way was sought, I think, uh, in, in a preempt, as a preemptive measure, if I may call it that, in case certain rules are changed. We want to be part of the rule changing Rule making. Team. Or rule, or rule making changing. Or rule changing. Even, okay. You know, the rule changes or whatever it is. We want to be part of it. It's precisely why China would not want to give that to you. You see, and this, this is the point that I think that is often lost uh, sight of. That it's not in China's interest to have us inside the tent. You know, I mean, they'd rather, as Lyndon Johnson said, uh, you know... <laughs> the famous statement of... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they have, they'd rather have us piss inside, you know, from outside into the tent. <laughs> okay. Even what, whatever the cost uh, to the tent and the people inside it. Okay. We are joined in now by Siddharth Vardarajan, founding editor of the Wire.in. Welcome, Siddharth. I'll come to you. Uh, let me go to... Uh, Ajay Lele now. Aj Ajay Lele, you know the membership of the MTCR, which which we seem to have got today, which has been, I think, formally approved or being approved today. How important is it? Is it some kind of a compensation to NSG? Can you would you say that? I think I don't. I will not say that there is a compensation as far as NSG is concerned. Uh, this is essentially because uh, if I put it simplistically that you are appearing for the exams and you got four questions. Uh, you should solve the questions which are easier earlier. What we did was that we had put our money on NSG which is supposed to be the toughest question. But having said that, that MTCR was not that a tough question because the elephant in the room which was there as far as NSG was concerned, uh, the C factor was not there as far as MTCR was concerned. So from that point of view, I think this is a welcome thing to happen. Uh, it should have happened few years back only. We had given indications in month of June itself uh, after we have signed the Hague Code of Conduct that yes, we are on the line and we are trying to follow the global norms on these issues related to MTCR and related issues. So from that perspective, I will say that it's a welcome thing to happen, uh, particularly at the fallout of what had happened in NSG. I think at least some sort of a success is there now. But what, what, what are the benefits of being a member of the MTCR? Uh, as far as MTCR is concerned, uh, the benefits are again uh, the technology. Uh, we were not uh, given the high-end technology. If you recall, uh, during early 1990s, India was denied the cryogenic engine from Russia because of the MTCR guidelines. So now there will be beneficiaries who will be the ISRO, Again, you are having a program along with Russia on BrahMos. That also will be beneficiary. There could be Arrow 2 missiles, which we will be able to manage from Israel now. Uh, so there are a good amount of benefits. We will be able to get 
uh, our hands on uh, US made uh, UAVs also. So I think there will be very tangible benefits as far as MTCR signing is concerned. Okay. Uh, Uday, Uday Baska, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Girish. Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, Uday, how do you look at this? You know, the, the, uh, this, this, one of the things which is being said as far as the NSG, whatever happened in Seoul is concerned is that, you know, it, it was, it was uh, a, a, a MEA, uh, a Ministry of External Affairs, took over the entire thing. The Atomic Energy Commission was not virtually consulted on this. There is a, a former chairman who says that, who has been, has gone on record saying that they were, they were not consulted. You know, when you look when you look back, do you agree with what my other guests are saying about this, or you know, do you have a different point of view? I have a slightly different interpretation, Girish, which is that I have heard you know what was said just now by my other co-panelists, and you will recall that we discussed this last week also. Right. So three quick points. I think the fact that the Chinese were able to block India as far as his admission is concerned along with the support of, quote-unquote, some other like-minded countries, is disappointing, yes. It is not surprising. Meaning that if you reconstruct the events of the last two weeks, I would say that from the time the Global Times came out with such a strong op-ed comment in which they castigated India and made various allegations, it was clear that China was going to do anything to ensure that India would be blocked, and that happened. But as far as membership into the NSG as a participating government for India, I'd like to suggest that it was not inconsequential. Now, as an objective, as a goal, I think for India, beginning July 2005, the ultimate objective was that we would be integrated, harmonized into the regime. Suppliers group. MTCR, Australia, Rupakar, etc. And therefore, there are certain benefits, some which are intangible, there are some which could become tangible, political, diplomatic, strategic. And I think I'd like to pick up on this line that was used, that if you are in the tent or in the group, there are collateral advantages for you. And I think we also have to take note of the fact that 2008, NSG as a collective had accorded exceptional status to India. Now, this needs to be formalized to avoid the possibility that a few years down the road, however low the exigency or the probability is, that another NSG plenary with different players should not revisit 2008. So, to prevent that exigency, I think it is desirable for India to look at formal status as a participating government. And we didn't make it this time, but I'm sure that this experience could be internalized and we have to see how best to, I've used the word somewhere else, dribble and see how we can get it. So okay. I think NSG membership as an objective is desirable. What could be discussed is if we go about it the right way. Okay. Investment cost effective. Okay. Um, Visibility according to it. Okay. Those are, I think, legitimate questions, and there are many views. We could have done this better. Okay. Um, yeah. Siddharth? Siddharth, you know, it is now being said that 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 you know, this could have been this could have been done in a better manner. But there are also people saying that you know this this was a very bold attempt on the part of the on the part of India to have taken it up. So there is. There is nothing that we really need to be, uh, you know, regretting about. Would you, do you do you do you take the same line? Look, there's nothing bold or uh, timid in diplomacy in the sense that this is a this is a goal that India has been pursuing pretty much since uh, I would say 2005, 2006, uh, and uh, membership of the NSG was uh, flagged also in 2008. Uh, it's a different matter that the uh, United States and the NSG members felt the time simply wasn't right. But uh, this has been something that's been under preparation. And I think that uh, the meeting, even though it didn't go well, uh, is not a disaster. You live to fight another day. The 2008 waiver uh, also went through two stages. 
I think the problem or the fault really lies in the uh, attempt that I saw uh, at a political level by the government, uh, which was quite convinced that this would go through in Seoul, to, to, to talk it up before the event, perhaps for domestic political reasons. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the Seoul plenary, there's no reason why it should have attracted any more media <coughs> attention, any more global attention than the MTCR plenary last year where India applied for membership and, and didn't, didn't succeed. Uh, there were no chess beating editorials. There were no uh, 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 you know, cries of the government being incompetent uh, after the meeting in The Hague uh, ended last year unsuccessfully. Uh, and that's because the government didn't hype it up. Uh, so I think that the government should have had a better measure of the, of the lay of the land. The fact is that uh, the NSG plenary would, can never succeed unless the United States is 100% behind it. And there was ample evidence to suggest that in the run-up to Seoul, the United States uh, was not 100% behind this. It was not doing the kind of heavy lifting that uh, occurred in 2008, particularly before the September 2008 plenary of the NSG. And for that reason, I think uh, Sena Council should have prevailed uh, in the MEA. Uh, you know, the point that uh, Dr. Karnad made about deploying the Prime Minister and his, his political capital. Uh, somewhere down the line, the MEA made a professional miscalculation, uh, particularly after the Foreign Secretary's China visit, that uh, maybe uh, uh, Modi Sahab's meeting with Xi is all that's needed to, to sway the Chinese. And that was a, a, a gross miscalculation because... Far from uh, that being a factor at all, you, if you look at the behavior of the Chinese delegation in Seoul, uh, it's very clear that the Chinese were, were and remain very, very far away from backing, uh, in, uh, backing India's candidature. And so is the case, unfortunately, with at least seven or eight other countries, again, some of whom took New Delhi by surprise. So I think that uh, there wasn't enough preparation. There was a miscalculation. There was overconfidence. Uh, having said that, you know, yes, you stumbled. But I don't think this is the end of the day. I think uh, the, the NSG will have to recognize the importance of admitting India as a member. And this will come sooner or later. Uh, but it requires India to play its cards more deftly. And it requires the United States to do the heavy lifting. Because at the end of the day, this is and still remains an American club. Absolutely. Chinese being the only uh, significant player who will not listen uh, to the Americans when it comes to an issue like membership for India. Okay. Uh, Meera Shankar. You know, there's, there's, there is one uh, school of thought which says that now that India is an MTCR member and China is not a member of MTCR, mm -hmm. and if China wants to enter MTCR, we can barter this with the, you know, with them as far as the NSG is concerned. You think that, that's the way it, 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 it works? Well, I, I'm not sure that will be the way it will work. I would rather think that uh, the application is there. It will be an ongoing process. And, uh, and th we these, would meetings certainly, in these meetings will take place next year? Yes, and, uh, we would certainly need the U.S. to do more heavy lifting uh, as they had done when we got the 2008 waiver from the NSG. And not just writing letters, but also, you know, picking up the phone and talking. And, um, you, you know, we would need to work with some of the other countries uh, who raise doubts about procedure and process during the course of this. So we would have to be much better prepared, um, you know, in terms of our diplomacy. And you would use whatever levers are available to you at that time. Mr. Karnad, you know, why, why do you think U.S. did not do the kind of heavy lifting it, it did in 2008 this time? Well, look, I think uh, there are two things, really. One is assuming they did the heavy lifting, would that have worked? Because, no, there's yeah, because there's a relative uh, imbalance now um, in, so in favoring China. Things, things have changed since 2008. There is a de relative decline in the U.S. influence and power worldwide and not just in the NSG. And so you have the problem wherein, you know, even assuming Obama had pushed hard and called up everybody and canvassed and so on, that it might have worked. It wouldn't have worked with Beijing. It may have worked with perhaps New Zealand and Ireland and so on. I doubt whether it would have worked with Turkey uh, because Turkey has come out and said they have hyphenated India and Pakistan. They said a joint entry would be uh, the best way to go. That's the, uh, the position they took. So you have a relative decline of America uh, combined with, I think, uh, Obama's being distracted by his own internal domestic uh, politics and so on. 
and the fact that I don't think he ever thought uh, or maybe he believed that India is not all that enthusiastic um, because the word, at least the grapevine one heard in, in Washington, um, uh, was that it was put to uh, uh, the Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister, that perhaps in some fashion you can sign an agreement, the, uh, the NSG as uh, the NPT, as a non-weapon state. Would you be agreeable if somehow it can be done? And uh, I'm given to understand the Prime Minister naturally and reasonably turned it down. So therein, Obama pretty much lost interest and said, well, you know, okay, fine, I understand and so on. But assuming that story is correct, you can see that perhaps the calling and the rest of the personal liaising by Obama with uh, the Western uh, countries that are still reluctant to support India's candidature uh, may not have worked and didn't work. Okay. So perhaps that's the story. Okay, Ajay Lele, this MT, MT, M, M, MTCR giving uh, us some kind of a leverage to, with China as far as the NSG is concerned. Do you, do you, do you subscribe to that view? Uh, I think I will uh, be slightly careful about uh, dealing with China in some, some sort of a barter sort of a mission. Uh, because one must understand and appreciate the fact that if India is telling the entire world uh, that we got one of the best non-proliferation records, uh, then it will not be prudent on the part of India to side with China in spite of fully knowing well that what sort of a record which they have got. So just to get one membership, you just can't allow China uh, to walk free uh, knowing fully well the type of a record which they have got right from Pakistan to North Korea uh, to Saudi Arabia as far as missile technology is also concerned. So from that point of view, I think India should be very careful uh, because let's not be too realistic also about the issues. One has to take certain amount of idealistic position as far as disarmament and non-proliferation is concerned. And I don't think so that India should give China a loose rope just because China is going to help India to get into NSG. Okay. It's an interesting point of view. Uh, Uday, Uday, you know, there, yeah. there, there, is this, there is this point of view which is now coming around, saying that you know, if in, if Pakistan has to be in the in the NSG, India should India will have no objection. If, you know, some so this is coming from the official quarters of the gov Indian government, saying that you know they won't object if Pakistan becomes is also uh, you know allowed into the NSG. How do how do you how do you look at that? Well, I would say first of all that. India should not allow itself to be linked again with Pakistan in any way. Because if you look back, I would say that the major punctuation of 2008, when India was accorded the exceptional status by the NSG, is that it was treated in a stand-alone manner. In 2016, for whatever reason, whether it is because of China or Pakistan's insistence, the suggestion that India should now be linked up with Pakistan, I think, would be a step back for India, should be avoided. As far as Pakistan's admission is concerned, I said this last time on your show, Girish, I'm saying it again. I think India should urge the collective of the NSG, go back to whichever yardstick they want, if they want to introduce criteria. At that time, Gary Ackerman, a U.S. congressman, had a great line. He said, let Pakistan establish a track record like India, which means, this is 2016, let's look at Pakistan's credentials in 2046. <laughs> so in that sense, I think India should not in any way get linked with Pakistan and urge the collective global community saying that more than membership, we are talking about a serious security challenge, which is AQ Khan. That is a shorthand. It is a linkage with terror groups. The possibility that fissile material could be, quote-unquote, enabled by a government like Pakistan to go to the wrong hands. And these are serious issues. Okay. And I think in the Seoul meeting, the chair did try to draw attention to the AQ Khan issue, but was deflected because of the politics that prevailed. Right. So I think for India at this stage, it would not be desirable, I think, to make any reference to about either supporting or not supporting Pakistan's candidature or okay. application. Okay. That should be treated by the NSG on its own merits. Siddharth, how do you look at this? You know, is that 
would that kind of a compromise is is it workable is it, is it would it also help in, improve india pakistan relations some people say that you know if we allow, if we uh, if we don't object to pakistan coming in it will help in indo pakistan relations also look there is uh, uh, that is that is fine in theory in practice there is absolutely no way that the nsg is going to admit pakistan as a member uh, i would say that as matters stand there is no way that the nsg will even consider giving a waiver to pakistan along the lines that india got in 2008 without the pa without the pakistanis fulfilling several more conditions over and above what india did Uh, so this discussion is essentially a discussion intended at the NSG to derail uh, India's candidature. Let's be very clear about this. Uh, are we seriously expecting uh, Ireland and Switzerland and Brazil and Mexico? Uh, 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 you know, when they talk of criteria, uh, are they really interested in a Pakistani membership of the of, of NSG? Certainly not. Uh, so this entire debate or discussion is is one that you simply can't win. I think it's important for India to. make the point that uh, no non npt country is alike india is very different from pakistan which is very different from israel which is very different from dprk these are the four countries and south sudan these are the five countries in the world that are outside the npt uh, there is no way that you can devise criteria that would uh, uh, cover these five because these five countries have absolutely nothing in common so i think we have to stress uh, on the point that Uh, in 2008 the nsg essentially recognized the necessity and importance of dealing with india as a de facto nuclear weapon state and they made a calculation that india as a major supplier country uh, is better uh, uh, it's better for the nsg if we are complying with the guidelines and you cannot expect us to comply with the guidelines forever and ever uh, if you're going to change them without india having a say in in that process so okay. it is logical if the nsg is concerned about creating rules for nuclear suppliers that a major nuclear supplier like india uh, be part of this process pakistan uh, ha, you know uh, during its outreach with the nsg was asked last year not last year this year in april uh, how many licenses export licenses has have you issued india by the way issued more than 100 licenses and we do so every year for nuclear items of one kind or the other on the nsg list uh, pakistan has zero so pakistan is not a nuclear exporter it is not a nuclear supplier and the entire debate on pakistani membership is one that is intended to derail it okay but okay. we need to be very clear about this okay. of course it's not for india to block pakistan or any other country uh, okay. the nsg needs to have rules uh, if they if members feel that pakistan deserves okay. uh, nuclear imports uh, then let them devise a way to do that okay, but that. what they should not do is to link uh, pakistan to india in any okay. way okay mira shankar very quickly uh, you think that you know in the in, how soon do you think that india will be able to get into the LS nsg i don't want to venture a, <laughs> a prediction it's uh, going to be a difficult process a complex process it's But not I something think, that which, which we can expect next year well the us i think there's some statement saying that there's some way forward to indian membership by the end of the year but uh, it depends what the way forward would be and if it is acceptable to india for instance you know signing the npt as a non nuclear weapon state is just out and that's out the whole question. basis of okay. the nuclear deal very quickly sir no the uh, the thing said about mtcr that we should not use it as a counter leverage or a counter pressure set and so on i think that's nonsense uh, diplomacy without hard power is uh, virtually uh, hollow posturing so let's at least understand how the chinese use it and they have used it so we can to use you it. think we can use of it of course we can and we okay. should okay i think on that note we need to end but you know we'll have to wait and watch how the, all these things will develop in the coming days but it is a tough ask which which uh, we still have on hand as far as getting a membership of the nsg is concerned that is something which all my panelists seem to agree about thanks to all my guests please keep watching we'll come back with another issue the big picture same time tomorrow.